Yep. It's going to be one of those nights, folks. Strap <laughs> in. It was a night just like this one. Large Marge was dead. Did you say Large Marge? It was a night. It was a night just like night. this one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. That's Benjamin. Yep. Did you miss me? Ian's around here somewhere. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. And I'm a fairy. Well, yeah, and you're also uh, using a face rig, so... Yeah. Uh, what, what, what you trying to say, bruh? Nothing, Tinkerbell. So anyway... <laughs> I figured if the thing was just going to be me for the whole time, like last time, I might as well just be a goddamn fairy, because, you know... Well, it's not going to be just you. We've got Ian back, and I'm also yeah, here. He didn't have a camera last time either, so it was just me. Um... Uh, yeah. All right. Well, how was your day last time, Ben? Good. Good. Yeah. Watched uh, The Little Prince and uh, a couple other things. Watched the thing about Bob Ross. Lived a fairly uh, secretive life for a guy. You know, one of the most famous painters in modern times. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys seen the little prince? Um, not for like a billion years. No, no, not the original one. The one that they came out with like last year. Then no. Well, it's it's on Netflix, so you should. Why? It's a good movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, older is better. Just look at alcohol. <sighs> anyway, how about you, Ian? How's the? <laughs> What's up? Not much. Uh, still having computer problems. Yeah, Ian's calling us from his XP machine. We experienced your technical difficulties. Play stand by. Well, at, at least at least he's able to like host the show this week. You know, like rather than being stuck on mobile. <laughs> So, stuck on. Yeah. What? Well, do I sound like really choppy? Yes. Not as choppy as you were when I joined the call, so it's getting better, I'd assume. But it yeah, was. When you hit play know. on the music, it sounded like butt. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is going to foretell of, of Ian's situation. Well. <laughs> 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 I could switch to the tablet. Um, no. I just don't know if my no. headset is going to sound better no. on this versus the. No. No, it's just this. This is this is it's it's decent enough. It occasionally gets a little bit crackly, but it. I, we don't I, need to be. We don't need to be tr pushing your. Uh... La last yeah. week, I yeah. I didn't know that there was just a picture of like it was just footage of me, with Ian tinkering in the background. So. It was literally just my face going, yeah, hi, yeah, um, yeah, hi, <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Uh, I really, really should have settled it offline before we uh, went live with that, but you know. We'll do it live. Well, Fuck it, we'll do it live. I don't know oh, no, I'm fired. Do it live. Do it live. Uh, what was that again? I, I didn't get any of that. Yeah, me I either. said I I don't know if there's much I could have done either way. I mean, uh -huh. yeah, that's that's cool, right? You feel me? Uh, uh, word, word, <laughs> word. Right. All right. Oh, well, so. You're going to have to be still screen sharing anyways, Frank. Me? Yeah. Because that shit uh, is going to, like, my voice is going to be, like, really crackly if I start trying to screen share on mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know I asked so much of you. 
I know, right? Let me minimize some more windows real quick here. Okay. You don't have to do it right now. No, I have to. I have to get okay. all my ducks in a row. Quack, quack. All right, so let's uh, put the jibber-jabber and uh, get this, get this uh, shindig started. Don't you tell me what to do. This ain't your show. <laughs> well, you know, I'm only going to be here until my girlfriend decides it's movie time, and then uh, I'm out we here. Got movie sign. I, I still need to watch uh, the new MST3K. I At all? I have not had time. It's been work on stuff, sleep, 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 work stuff, get sick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, been one of them. <laughs> So, anyway, hmm. right. So, who wants to go first with what what we've been doing? Uh, How about Ian, since we're kind of curious what's going on with him? <laughs> oh, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Hit us up. Uh. Not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Remedy. Uh, uh, I've been. This is what they tuned in for. I've been still. <laughs> no, I've been uh, still trying to uh, get stuff ready for my computer. I've, I've been working on. Huh? Uh, I dusted my compute, my new computer out more, more, and uh, try to cable management uh, it a little bit better. Huh. Now, for and those then, that don't don't recall, Ian, you said your power supply went on on your main machine, and you know the, he he crossed uh, the header uh, posts, right? The USB yeah. header. Yeah. The, Ooh. The guy think that's that's probably what was messing with it, and my uh, CPU fan was uh, like being faulty or whatever. Oh, wow. did you ever figure out a way to mount it to your uh, cooler? Um, well, actually, uh, I just discovered today that uh, the shroud actually does, when I took it off of it, it does have a normal fan in it. So I could I could have bought a normal fan, but uh, the, the kind that I got has, like, I thought it had uh, drill holes in it, but it's like a weird way of mounting it. So I'm gonna have to get another f fan to put in the shroud. But mm -hmm. luckily, that then I could just snap it on with the sh oh. shroud. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Cool. So that's what you've been up to, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Benjamin? Uh, me? Well, I've been moving my blog over from regular shared hosting to managed WordPress hosting with uh, DreamPress. And uh, that entailed mo moving all the old podcast episodes over to different hosting because uh -huh. yeah, they, they t support sent me an email saying, uh, we had a bit of a problem moving your site because of this folder with all these MP3s in it that add up to like 30 gigabytes um, because... The, the, you know, the managed WordPress host, it, you know, is like defaults at like 30 gigabytes. So we could add, we could add more space, but it'd probably be better to have it on this other solution that you basically pay, you know, pennies to the gigabyte and for bandwidth and whatnot. It's a little bit cost, more cost effective. So uh -huh. after tinkering around, I decided to use that. And then I had to, I had to get an alias for that. So it looked cleaner when people go find the files. And then I also had to, fix the permissions on it and once i got that going i had to fix it in the plugin the u the urls weren't forming right and i had to i spent about a day and a half getting that running uh -huh. so yeah uh -huh. so i was doing that stuff uh lately i've been i've been looking into uh html5 development because i'm thinking about uh do, doing some stuff with some of the urls i've got in the uh, that shared hosting trying to build a clean you know, HTML5 animation site, kind of like Homestar Runner or something, you know, to show off my, what I do. Download! Characters? 
Yay. Well, you know, since since I since I got a you know uh you know the 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 uh, business version of Animatron, you know, oh, which yeah. I forgot about that. Which let which lets you host like you know 100 gigabytes of you know animation, <laughs> you know HTML5 stuff. It's like, well, why not use that <laughs> and see what happens? So, right. What was but, that uh, thing you emailed me? I forget. What company was that? Which 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 thing, Frank? Are you talking? Uh, oh, you talking about the uh, that video editor yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What company was that? Uh, it was Wondershare. They okay. just rebranded the the Wondershare video editor as Filmora. I think it was. Yeah, I had yeah. it on my old hard drive. Mm. But yeah, I I got a, a a bundle there where you you buy for like I think it was forty nine bucks. They you could buy five business licenses of it. And a and a free uh, effects uh, pack or something like that. So, I I got one. I left. I gave Frank one. Uh, Ian, do you need a a video editor? Uh, sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's I guess. Sweet. Well, I mean, it's also like lifetime, yeah. so it's all future updates as well. So, hey, you got the free effects reading. That's that's pretty cool. Well, that one, that one's all right. I was kind of hoping to get the other two, like the the actual effects, because that one was more. I got the uh, the the one that does like, uh, fil- you know, grain and stuff like that. And yeah. I was I'd like to get the actual one that does like cinema effects, but that's like you know two bundles for like sixty some bucks each. Oh. I don't know. I thought I'd I thought I'd see if uh, if if you need one. I'm trying to trying to decide who of our friends could use it the you know. Mo- use like, it the most, so I can be mo- most. Yeah, that's. I was debating. It's like, like, let's see. I've got one. I g- gave one to you. Get one to you. In, so then, that would be. You think Doug and Kyle might appreciate it? I don't know. I don't know. I know. Kyle, I don't know if Kyle needs one or not. But I mean, I know Doug. Well, you know. Him. Yeah, Doug probably would. If if we ever see him around. <laughs> right. So, so. Uh, that's cool. What else have you been yeah. up to? Uh, oh, also, I, I saw, I, like I said, I got Admatron f- for a, a year for forty nine bucks because usually it's sixty bucks a month for that. But uh, apparently, I saw there on Mighty Deals, I think it was that they, they're offering it for forty seven for a year. Yeah. So thought I, thought I might mention that for, to you, so if you're interested. Uh-huh. So, yeah, but uh, but you know, trying to figure out some HTML five, trying to figure that out. Cause it's like I've I've been in WordPress for since like 2007, and it's like I kind of want to go go just to HTML and try and make something sleek and not fuss with an admin page and <laughs> you know I don't know. I see. I don't know. <laughs> How about you, Franklin? What have you been up to? Oh, yes, see it. Uh, all I could understand that was word tablet. Uh, I heard a robot ask a question. How about how about we? Uh, how about you try letting you know this computer host the call? You can try calling back on your tablet. See if it comes in any better. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll rejoin on my tablet. It'll sound a lot better, and I'll have my camera on there. Okay. Okay. That's what. Try yeah, we. That's what we, I thought it, you right? might have said. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Frank, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? Um. Well, I've been watching uh, the new Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Mystery it. Science Theater three thousand. Wham. Yeah, the um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, my my uh, coworker actually uh, alerted me that they do uh, a movie that I really enjoyed, so I had to watch that episode specifically. Oh, all right then. But uh, how, how you liking the new cast on it, Frank? Um, they're they got, they're pretty good. They're they're finding their groove. Find their groove. Mm-hmm. Uh, any, any thoughts on the new bots? Bots? Um, yeah. 
I know Joel told the guy who's doing uh, Crow not to do the Trace impression, but so far he's doing it because he wanted him to find his own voice and not just do Traces. I'm uh, surprised how much, like, uh, what was it, Bill, Bill's version of Crow sounds like Traces, and yet it doesn't, I don't know, it's, it's weird. No, he just sounds like Bill. Oh? Bill, Bill Corbett doesn't do a voice as much as he just does... Bill. I'm just saying, like, he naturally sounds like, you know, like Crow enough, you know? So. You can hear the difference. Hello? You can hear it, but it's, you know, it's like Hi. it's like when uh, John K. stopped doing Ren because he got fired, and they and uh, they, they they had Billy West doing both. It's like, you can hear the difference, but it's 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 acceptable. Yeah. Hi, Ian. Hi, is, it, is this, like, a lot better now? Well, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. So, yeah, that's baller. You can, like, yeah. see you and stuff. And, uh... Yeah, well, I mean, there's that, but, you know, aside from that. Yeah. Uh, well, like, I don't know how much worse of a quality just headbuds are going to be compared to these. I tried plugging these in, but it wasn't recognizing it for some reason, even though, like, I used a, one of those adapters to go from mm -hmm. regular USB to the micro. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, but... I mean, I guess, I guess they're pretty good for some Apple earbuds, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, and plus, you get to see my, my. Uh, well, actually, first, this is the shroud I was talking about. Uh huh. So you could put like a regular uh, fan inside of it, and then this mounts, this clips onto the oh. uh, metal heat sink. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to see some. Good techno porn here. Here's my uh, uh, my computer all naked and stuff. But naked. Yep. Oh, you got an 850 power supply? Yeah. Ooh. Gold. Certified gold. Not brown, but gold. I, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but... <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's it's all cable, man. I, I try to cable manage as best that I could, but he's, the cables are still going to need to come out of the thing, you know? Unless I need to get one of those basement covers like uh, they all, all the YouTubers have, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I could, get, I could actually probably use my... Uh, get some actual lighting in here <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but yeah. yeah what i'm what i might do is i might try to figure out a way of mounting the other fan on the other side but then have the main fan on this so i have like two fans on both sides so it'll be like really cold <laughs> you know gotcha yeah. Hmm. You don't say. But yeah, this this is my SSD here. Oh, you already installed your uh, OS on it? No, not yet. Uh, I was. I'm. I'm still fucking around with. Uh, whoops. Uh, trying, trying to make a bootable USB thing, like all in one USB thing with Linux and like Hiren's Boot CD and all that shit. But it's. I. Uh, I'm just trying to mess around with Refus and all those other like mounting tools and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a work in progress. I was working on a computer today, uh, like I was saying, and then I was working on other stuff. It's it's just crazy. There's just like not enough time in the day for all this stuff, you know. Right. Yep. Um, which is why I've, I've I understand it's it was taking Jay a long time to do that. Terry Crews build, but I, I finally did see that. Yeah. Now that you got that done. I saw the thumbnail for it. I haven't watched the actual video yet. Oh, it looked, it looked interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Uh, what was it that uh, LA Beast, the new video of his? The blooper. Like I was going to. I started watching it. It's, it's long. No, it was something else. It was a uh, what was it? It was it was a eating thing. No, I watched him do the Harold Kamara White Castle challenge. Yeah, that's it. The White Castle challenge. Yeah, 
Yeah, I watched I watched that, but I watched him do a bloopers. Uh well, I, I had on my uh to do, to to watch later list that when where he's talking about is it in over for YouTubers and shit. Yeah. But that I clicked on it and then saw it was like an hour or two or something. I was like Okay, it's, it says we're live. Uh, anybody home? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hmm. Can you hear us, Ben? Are you guys talking? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear us? I don't think he could hear us. Oh no. Hello. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Can you type in the chat tell him to re try rejoining? Oh boy. No, I I can hear you guys now, it's just I've gotta try and pipe the audio. Uh, through my headphones as it should be. Hey, look who's here. Oh, shit. What's, What's up, Doug? Bullet Club in the house! What? I said, Bullet Club in the house. Ben, you need to stop having your brother hang out and watch anime on the weekends. What the hell is with that damn avatar? Um, you know. <laughs> stuff. What's going and on? more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phones no want worky, so... Today, you sit on myself, luckiest man in the world. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up? For for those of you that aren't aware, we uh, we were experiencing. We had to restart this podcast <laughs> again. Yeah, what happened? We don't know. Well, trying to do a, a host a show on an XP machine is what happened. No, what probably happened was that, whoa. Damn. Well, if I get booted out of this for some strange reason, uh, it might be because there was a lightning strike not too far from here. But um, oh, no. uh, what no, probably, no, ha probably happened with the, last, with the last stream out is very simple. Someone took a look at Franklin's avatar. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, like... Oh, okay. Th this has got to be like some really bad porn or something, so we got to block it. Thanks a lot, Adpocalypse. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, how you doing? Did that even deserve a rim shot? Nope. <laughs> oh, I can hear the lightning and thunder outside. Yeah, you, actually, that must be a close to Doug, too, then. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, pretty quiet here. Yeah, I can barely hear. Hey, Ben, say something. Repeat after me, Ben. Check out my Tumblr. Uh, yep, yeah, but I can't hear shit. I can hear you and Frank just fine, Ian, but I can't hear Ben. Yeah. You can't hear Ben that well? No, I can't. I really hear him at all. <sighs> I'll rejoin. <laughs> uh, you, you, oh, there, I, I could actually hear him there for a sec. But... He's gone now, Doug. You scared him away. Yeah. You, you, Are you sure man. it's not that god-awful avatar? Nope. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> I'd rather hang out with the Navi avatar than watch that shit. Yeah. Don't worry. I don't give a fuck about what you think. The federal government might care. Nope. Nope. Can you hear me now? There we go. And I'm going to switch to studio so I'm sounding good and sexy. How about now? I wouldn't say that, but... <laughs> Haters going to uh, hate. Okay, so here's the thing. At least Ben's on camera, Frankie. Oh my. Got it on camera. Face cam's a camera. Or face rig's a camera. Sure it's it is, It's animated right? on my face. It's not just a still picture. See? So, yeah. what have you been up to? Tell me. Uh, we already we caught up with Ian and everybody. <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing really too extreme currently. Just uh, doing more uh, planning and whatnot for the gym. I got a couple different things going on, too, on the side. Um, there's a couple things, actually. Oh, uh, hey. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Doug, uh, Ben has some video editing software. He wants to know if you want a free copy. He's got licenses to give away. I'm actually, uh, I, I haven't got a chance to take a look at it yet, but I will. I'll take a look yeah, at Ben's it. making it rain licenses. Make it it's being like... <laughs> well, off the back of a BitTorrent download. No, I, uh... I bought a deal that they give you lifetime access and five uh, licenses because I guess they want people to get it. <laughs> so <laughs> get that uh, shit, dog. Cool. Word. Oh yeah, I was thinking about doing a news article, but it's been going on for a while now, so it's not like breaking new news. But uh, did you guys hear about how Autodesk, the makers of my like my favorite three D software, there? Going to subscription only. Uh oh. And they're, they're, uh, yeah, it's like with the cloud stuff and, uh, they're getting rid of the, so they're getting rid of the perpetual licenses, uh, they're, and they're trying to get people off of the ones that already own the perpetual licenses and trying to get them to trade it in. So they're pulling an Adobe, uh, is what you're saying. Yeah. So they're basically like, yeah, to get the latest and greatest, all you have to do is just give up what you've paid thousands of dollars for to uh, keep paying us for right. again. And then this time you have to, uh, if you don't keep paying, then you have to get a, uh, then you can't use the software anymore. Lame. See, subscription services make sense if they're constantly rolling out updates, but it's like, you know, there's a subscription service now for text expander and everyone's like, what, why, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, with the Autodesk stuff, it's, like, honestly, and I use the software, they've been, like, really lacking on that. And so, like, you don't even get, like, they have a program called Maintenance where you pay uh, the, uh, like, every year or whatever. It's sort of like a subscription, but you're, you actually own the software and you're just paying for the upgrades each so year. For, oh, so you're just paying for the support and the next version, basically. Yeah. But they're even yeah. trying to do away with that, and they're uh, they're going to keep hiking up the prices to make it more and more expensive. They're going from like five, one year, ten, up to like twenty, or probably even more, the following years until people just can't do it anymore. That's a rate me charge right there. Hey, yeah. A question for you. But, How is Babby formed? <laughs> I'll make baby. A... Uh, how did Franklin not get thrown through a window as a child? No, sorry, uh, wrong question. Um, the actual question is uh, that license for Femora, does that go for both Mac and Windows? Uh, it should. I, I'm having a little trouble. Try I was trying to find... Because the uh, the place I bought from give you a code, and then you enter that into the thing, and then Filmora sends you the serial number and the link to download a Mac or PC version. So, I don't know. I think you might need it. I don't know. Which version did you need? Mac. 
Oh, Matt, okay. Matt, I'll... You know, Matt. I don't run XP like certain people around. Well, it, hey, it, you it, collect it, XP machines, though. Well, um, type XP machines can run Linux perfectly fine. There, dipshit. Well, type it. Type into the uh, into that that ch that uh, chat window you and I were doing earlier, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll see if I can. Uh, the e just give me the email address you want them to send the the thing to, and I'll uh, see if I can forward. I, I tried to do one for Ian, but I don't know if it's giving me trouble if I copied the wrong one no, or no, what. No, 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 no. If well, uh, while he's doing that, uh, Frank, did you want to uh, go back to your uh, the battle stations since we have to catch uh, Doug off anyways you with mean that? The I man figure. Cave? Yeah, the man cave. The man cave. Well, give me the link because I. Uh... Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I thought I emailed it to you. Mm, I don't know. Let me look. Hold on. There you go, man. Okay. Let's see. Uh, no, I guess I will have to put it in there. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh. So anyway. Frank, it, Frank and Ian are uh, showing off man caves. They're kind of like battle station computer setups, except... But it's a whole uh, room. They're called rigs! 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 Well, we're not we're not doing those this time. We're doing actual man caves with, like, this one guy had, like, a bar or something with stools. Tight, 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 tight. Hmm. I don't know. For some reason, it's saying I'm over the limit. Uh, I mean, it's when over I the sent limit. the thing to you, Frank, it worked fine, right? What? When I sent the thing to you, they sent you an email about it, right? Yeah, and then I went to download it, and now when I go to install it, it says I don't have a file, and I'm trying to fix it. Uh, how about you, Ian? Did, did it uh, get, get through to your email, or is it stuck in the spam thing? I might have accidentally sent you uh, multiple licenses trying to get the thing to work. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'll have to check in a second, man. I didn't see it in my email. Well, be sure to check the spam filter, too, because you know how aggressive Google is. Google no spam! No spam for you, one year. Uh... No, 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 no. Yeah, I took in a I took in a meeting earlier this week about uh, about my gym. So, about found out some interesting information. What What about your game? <laughs> so, oh, a game. What's uh? What 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 kind of information did you find out? Uh, actually, I wasn't really expecting to find out some stuff, but more stuff about um, the real estate. Um, you know, places to go, places not to go. Uh, also found out some uh, information about a couple of gyms in the area that have either moved or are no longer in operation. So, got a couple different things going on. Mm -hmm. So, you're starting a gym up? Is that what you're doing? Yep. Hmm. Time, huh? Did Did you mention this on a previous episode that I was not a uh, not on, or what happened? Yes. Well, would you mind filling me in on this info? It well, did. basically, I'm starting a gym. See ya. What kind of um, What kind of gym? Is it a combination titty bar and gym, or just a regular gym? Yeah, uh, that's going more for warehouse gym style, something a little bit more um off the cuff. So to speak, um, kind of modeled in the vein of uh, Metroflex California CT Fletcher's gym. You know, basically, like the way CT Fletcher has his gym set up, you basically run it out of warehouse, this, this fairly large warehouse. You had told a bunch of people come in, graffiti up the walls, paint them, make them look what however they want to, 
and it's called the Iron Addicts Gym. My gym is going to be called the Iron Cathedral. Mm -hmm. The initial idea I had was to put it into a, a church. But and they said that's I, blasphemy. Huh? And they said that's blasphemy. Actually, no. There's actually a couple churches that have gyms in them now. So yeah. There's one in New York where there's a cardio equipment in the in Belfry. <laughs> so, huh. but uh, I don't uh, have four hundred thousand dollars to buy the property. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you taking out a loan for this business plan, there, Doug? Or well, the way I'm thinking of doing, I'm actually thinking about doing a GoFundMe to help fund it. Uh, possibly seek out some angel investors. Um. Mm. I want people to actually feel like they can come to a gym and actually be comfortable instead of, you know, being fake comfortable at some gyms. Um, actually, that should be a, a good natured place instead of a place where you have to follow certain rules. I'm a, I'm, I'm more of a looser set type of guy. I, I follow the standard gym rules, but if you're telling me to not make noise while I work out or, Telling me that I can't do certain things when I work out. <laughs> Don't mind Frank, he's on the can. So. Whoa. Lightning. All right, then. Uh, okay, so, Ian, you got those links? I'm trying to send them. I'm about to hit send right now. Send that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, oh. So, shouldn't you, uh... Like, when you open up your, uh... Your gym, are you gonna be, like, really big by then? I mean, the, the good kind of big? I'm already seeing, uh... You know, the type of gains I've been waiting to see for years. Uh, gains? Mm-hmm. Just generally, like, seeing veins and actually being able to fit in clothes I haven't been able to fit in in quite a long time. Even though my weight is still fairly large, it's, you know, I don't feel like a fat tub of mayonnaise, you know what I'm saying? I feel like a woman. So, you don't, you don't feel like a, a tub of mayonnaise, you feel more like a Miracle Whip light? As, uh, I, I, don't, I don't feel like how Franklin's face looks, essentially. Um, so you don't feel like a pretty, there. uh, anime chick? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so here's the first Batcave. Let me zoom in for... You mean Man Cave, this. right? Not Batcave. No, this is the... No, this is the Batcave, Joseph. But there's well, no Batman. Batman. There's a... That's a... That's a Marvel cave, apparently. Look, no. Look. Look. Hold on. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't care that it says Batcave... The first thing I see there is the fact that he has some deer on some pillows in a place like that, bro. You need uh, something a little bit, um, oh, I don't know, cooler than um, the <laughs> knockoff. Could you make it cooler than you made it? Yeah, so, some knockoff mossy oak in there. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't have it both ways, bro. You can't. You can't sit there and say, Hulk, Captain... It's better Batman. than bad, it's good. No, better than bad, that, it's good. Not good. That is not good, no. Look, and, and Doug, look, they got your Xbox. Yeah. Xbox is shit. <laughs> yeah. He's got a uh, tiny little monitor there for his Xbox. Okay. And then we got... Well, uh, hold on. Where's... That's the wrong one. Here we go. This guy... But, uh, I'm, we were rattling off all this stuff, and then we didn't notice that the show was li wasn't live anymore. So, yeah, I, I didn't notice, and then I like I was just freaking out trying to figure out what to do. I I didn't even hear your guys' opinions on the thing. <laughs> I I think I remember Ben was like, "Oh man, it's got like a projector or something." <laughs> yeah, Doug, uh, this fellow's got a ninety-two inch projector screen with uh, he's got a um, what the hell is that? Turntable with some audiophile grade headphones and a, and a big ass sub. Ooh, yeah. 
So basically, he wants to take it. He wants to oh, look yeah. more like the douchebag from American Psycho. Okay. <laughs> Mad. Okay. His computer's got an Intel. Oh, he's got NVMe memory for his storage hmm. solution. Sweet. Can't even run the drive at full speed. Oh, well. Because he's got a PCIe uh, card adapter there for his M.2. Oh, yeah. He's going on a tangent, but did you see that Linus Tech Tips thing with that? Uh, I forget what they called it, but it's like a it's a booster for your uh, yeah. regular hard drive to make it like an SSD speeds yeah. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, saw you, that. You, uh, Intel Optane? Yeah. 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 But it, it so it does. <clears throat> I'm surprised you heard of that, Doug. He watches on his tech tips. Yep. Wow. He has the interwebs. Says, now, 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 going from one douchebag trying to look like a jackass to this next douchebag that's trying to look like a jackass. Okay, first things first. This dude is a fucking weeb. Okay, look at him. <laughs> yeah. What's hold on? What's what's Asian about this, Doug? Huh? <laughs> What's Asian about this? Did you say weeb or dweeb? I said weeb. Fucking weeb. Okay. How so? No, I'm not talking about that idiot anymore. I'm talking about the last one. The guy with the... This one was my favorite, actually. In the back cave with the deer pillows? No, no. The last... He's talking about the third one. He he must have sneaked a peek at the third one. This hold on. I'm so minimalist. I'm so minimalist. You know what? I can't trust a motherfucker who uses a fucking Android phone. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. And also, no. fucking. We're hosting the f- show on an Android. <laughs> Tablet. Well, that's a fucking. That's he just throws down his headphones and storms out. <laughs> what fucking monster? What fucking monster? Monster, monster uses a keyboard that doesn't have a keypad. What oh, the boy. fuck? Get the fuck out of here. Well, what? technically, they say it's actually more ergonomic for gaming because it's smaller. Your hands aren't as far apart when you're using the mouse. Shut up. But also, why are you calling him a weeb? Because the weeb refers to an anime fan that uh, that it's from the word weebu. This guy has no. The only thing he has is a. Uh, Mega Man here on his uh, Nintendo. I don't see. I don't get what you're talking about. He's trying to be all minimalist with his presentation, except he's trying to cram two tons of shit in a one-ton shitter. Uh, yeah, that's you're you, you don't you're sorry. You're unclear on your definition of a uh, weeb. <laughs> weeb refers to uh, uh, a Japanese fanboy, basically. An otaku. Yeah, he, he's trying to act all minimalist with it, and that's how uh, most. Uh, Japanese people are. They're very minimalist. They no, don't they don't have fucking space. Fucking so they... like us Americans do. But this dude's trying to cram so much shit into his fucking room. Ugh. No, no, Doug. They're, they're, they're not minimalist. They just don't have fucking room. That's why their hotels are literally shoots. Like... <laughs> so are you, are you saying if you have a small room, you shouldn't get a giant TV? Well, this guy has a 92-inch screen, and he's got a nice couch. I mean, you so you wouldn't chill yep. and hold on. So you wouldn't chill and listen to records in this space, is what you're telling me, Doug? No, I'm not talking about that dude, slap nuts. What? Which dude? The uh, this dude? Ding 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 ding! Actually, this is the second highest rated one on a uh, on a uh, battle stations. Yeah, this is my favorite one, actually. If you if you want my opinion. <laughs> I mean, what's he got that's like so over the top? He's got all his shit kind of laid out with, with room to breathe. <sighs> yeah, Doug, don't you like uh, when your cables are managed and shit? And I mean, you you want to does... trip over your cables and your? Oh yeah, that's that's right. He he wants to have like his stacks of CDs and stuff everywhere, right? He wants it all on vinyl. If you're not tripping over yeah. your uh, cables, then you're not going to tech support and having them fix your problems. So, he, so he's out of a fucking job. That's why they took our germ. 
totally. Look, look at this fucking bullshit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I have I have a side sitting screen. I'm so fucking cool. I have a portrait monitor too. Stupid. Oh. No, it's, <laughs> no, okay. For one, it could be used for coding. I got RGB. You know what's good for RGB? Throwing Stop it in the, the cat's ass. Stuff fucking throwing it in the fucking trash. RGB is fucking weak. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, no. You don't the, like the, RGB. The monitor I get that. Could be for coding. But it's also for when you're on a, a website like Reddit that you do infinite scrolling. Uh, and it's an Asus monitor, so it's not weak. <laughs> RGBD's nuts. Yeah, okay. Red, green, and blue lights. So lights that can go to any color. That's, that's oh my okay. goodness. Let's fucking blow wad over some fucking LED lights. Yeah. <laughs> and you know hey, what? Hey, I, I, I got it. No, wait, wait, wait. If you, yeah, my camera. If you need to purchase and reset a fucking monitor to the side just to be able to do Reddit, you know what you need to do? Stay oh, the fuck off of Reddit all damn day. How about that? Well, see, okay, Doug, see, this is a feature that after Windows Millennium that you could use, see, but oh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know about that. Oh, feature. You know what that, that, what that is? That's fucking kowtowing to fucking PC Master Racers who fucking say, oh, well, I could do shit doing it like this. I but turn we start? my fucking monitor on its side. Aren't you glad you asked him? Well, this. let me ask you, Doug. How much, what would you, if you had, like, all the money in the world, What like, how many screens and shit would you get? Four. Four 19 inches. One, two, nine, three, four. Done. Benito. Have a nice day. Thank you for calling. Why do you need why only 19, Doug? 19's bullshit. That's kind of small. Because your fucking range of sight also added with the amount of fucking bezel space in between the monitors, it anything really above maybe 24 inches. I'd max out at 24. Anything above 24 inches and you're fucking sacking. Just like that one you showed me a couple weeks ago that looked like a fucking horrendous Tetris piece. Three on the bottom, one on the top. What type of shit is that? So you, would, you wouldn't be like that Barnacles where you had like four televisions that were like 50 inches each? No. Hell <laughs> to the no. Oh, boy. Okay, so back to uh, the guy with the listening station. I would chill in here. This is, uh, this is pretty, pretty yeah, nice he, here. You're talking about the... The one we were just starting on about here. The audio file. I like his setup. Oh. Uh, oh, so that's the second one? Yeah. I, I, I don't fuck. I that. have a listening station in my man cave. No, that's not the one with the 90-inch screen, right? 92, yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, the 92. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he can game and he can listen to music. Only thing I wouldn't have bought, I wouldn't have bought those tiles because... You know, it's a little expensive for what you get. Word. But, you know, what about you, Ben? Uh, oh, that's the uh, projector. You got, you got the bat cave, with which really doesn't have much bat or cave. It's, well, considering his small space, he's basically got a shed. And, he and you know, yeah. Doug would like it because he's got the workout gear right there. He's got the he's got a monitor the size Doug would what Doug would like. <laughs> yeah. You know what happens when you get yeah. a nineteen inch monitor? You get this little LG sucker he has here. Well what's right. which one would you pick, Ben? Well Would you pick the Bat Cave, the uh projector one or the Weeb one as Doug called it? Well I'm tr I was trying to look at the the the, the, the other two. I didn't see Let's the see. other two. The big the big one here with the RGB Mm -hmm. Which has big ass TV. I don't know what size. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it says. Hope it froze on me. And that sure did. Fucking Weed Mania 2017. And uh, so basically, that that guy is mostly wireless, huh? Is that what, is that what he yeah. does? Or... Yeah, he's all minimalist. Uh, a one syllable <laughs> contraction of Weibo, which is internet for Weaponese. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. So, well, guess what? I'm redefining this shit. A person obsessed with anime figures and right, manga. 
yeah, that's this 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 fella does not look obsessed with the uh, anime figure uh, at all. There, uh, Doug. I don't I don't know what you're. I'm redefining this shit right now. Oh, he got a dictionary and shove it up your thesaurus, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, Ben, uh, what what, yeah. what, are you, what are you looking at here? You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? Ben? Ben? Hello? Hello? What? <laughs> Anybody home? Oh, Jesus. Is, this, is ben, Ben's connection messed up or something? Oh, he said he left the group. Yeah. We're all having kind of the technical difficulties here, man. Right. No, I blame um, you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't affect his connection. Yeah, yeah, you did. Hi, Ben. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Ben Jamin. Ben Hamin. Hello. Can you hear us? Hello. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. Ben. <laughs> Ben folds five. Hello. Hello. Ben. Okay, Ben can't hear us. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, we've yeah. been able to hear you, dude. Yeah, my headphones been going in and out, so. Oh, no. Hmm. So, uh, don't, we were trying to ask you which one did you like. Uh, well, I like the the latter two, and I mean the projector is nice and all, but it's not a, not as clear a picture. Like, I mean, it's nice to have a big screen, but it's not as good a picture as like a regular monitor. So I'm gonna go with the last one first, then that one, and then the Batcave. So you like this one, then this one, then that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And Doug? I think you know my answer. None. Okay. No, he's got to get a vote, man. No, he doesn't like any, and, he's, and he says uh, confused racist remarks. Oh, boy. Well, which one do you hate the least, Doug? The ones that I hate most the least is the not bat cave. He hates pieces to pieces. Do you like the projector one? Yeah. Come on, man. I guess I, I guess that's a yes. He likes he's for the projector one. And which is uh, that one you either have, have a fucking man cave or you have a theater room. Pick a fucking light, okay? No, you can have your cake and eat it too. Fuck that shit. Well, I guess, I guess we're kind of at a a, a tie then because you you wanted the projector one, right, Frank? Too. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, and I like the third one just like Ben. So uh, we're both at a tie here. Um. Well, I can break this tie. You're both wrong. The third one's shit. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so let me show mine. If it if it ever loads, what are you trying to show us here? It's just just wait. You gonna give us a tiebreaker here? No. So I got these nice little, cool little little plain black black little dress here. See see, plain there. And then I got check this bad boy out. Can you see this? Yeah, that's a custom wood desk. That's or a custom, custom wood case, wall mounted. Hmm. Yeah, because nothing can go wrong. What the fuck is that dumb shit? <laughs> what the? It... What, you know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> what the? Find the droids uh... Yeah, what's up with that? 
And then he's got uh You know what? To whoever to whoever did that 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 right there. Yeah. Whoever did that, that to whoever did that rig and that yeah. one too. That right there. <laughs> you just made a list. Of of what? Well, it could be vinyl. No, it's it's fucking wood. You they, just made it. Just made it. It's, it's wood, Dan. See? Well, See, cool. You could have your uh, wooden headphones go with that. You got Star Wars shit over here. See? Ah, uh, well, there you go. Fucking done. Got old flat screen <laughs> Sylvania. Oh my God, there's on the wall. Oh boy. Well, the good thing about wood is that it's good acoustic properties, so it's gonna, it's probably gonna self soundproof a little bit. Yeah, the first and damn thing that burns down when that fucker catches fire. So then look at this. This guy made his own desk. See, he he started out with this piece of shit, and then he got some boards, and stained them. And uh, now he's got this nice slick motherfucker right here with some pipe. Well, the computer's fucked anyways if it gets that hot for it to well, catch on fire house. in the first place. Yeah, you, 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 what the fuck is that shit? Seriously. What, this shit? And of course, we're fucking RGB. Bullshit. It's pretty dope. Welcome to this old house of American woodworking. What what are we trying to look at, uh, Frank? Are we uh, are we trying to pick a winner for this? I mean, I'm no, I'm just showing. Uh, I took some ones that I thought were nice and felt like sharing. Okay. I don't know who who do you think we should pick um, for the winner this week then. Something that uh, doesn't have RGB and is not a horrible idea. I, the 92-inch uh, projection I, I, I screen. I think that this, this little gallery this, here has nothing. And okay, well, uh, who's the? What's the username of that? We could give a shout out to to him. Uh, his, <clears throat> the guy with the 92-inch screen. His yeah. uh, his username on Imager is Loose on the Goose. Oh, congratulations, Lee Sonic C1. Yay. Anyways, you want to get on to some news then? Get this done with. Get this done with? I want to go home and see my family. Well, I mean, I, I don't care, but I know it's going on kind of long here. Okay, do you have a. Do you have I a certain one you want to start with? Not really. I don't care. No. Um, you could just start with the uh, Vader's M one. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Closing in nine seconds. Five. Yeah. Okay. Invader Zim returns to Nickelodeon, an all new original TV movie. Creator Honan Vasquez serves as executive producer, original voice cast, to reprise the roles in a new 2D animated TV movie based on the fan favorite animated series. Yep. yep. <laughs> Nickelodeon has officially greenlit an all new 90 minute Invader Zim TV movie. From original creator, uh, that guy, uh, marking the network's third anime property uh, from its rich library of content to be reimagined for today's audience. The 2D anime TV movie produced by Nickelodeon Burbank will show the latest and greatest ridiculous attempt at world domination by the universe's uh, worst alien invader ever. The movie will also feature original voices from the fan favorite television series. Ben, you're an Invader Zim fan, right? Me? What's uh? What's your take on this? I mean, has that Hey Arnold movie come out yet? I, I don't know. I mean, I like how Joden uh, 
trolls the fans. Go, attention invaders Zoom fans. Zoom is still canceled forever. Also, I just had a really tasty sandwich today. Hmm. So. Uh, Doug, did you enjoy Invader Zoom? I actually did not watch it. The only thing I ever heard from my friends about Invader Sim was <laughs> and that was about it. Oh, the Doom song. Uh, Ian? Uh, I, I didn't see it either, man, so I don't really have much, much opinion about it. <laughs> oh. It was, I, I, I just know it was, like, really popular, and I see, like, everybody with T-shirts with Invader Sim. It was a good show. Unfortunately, it got... Too popular, too fast, because it's a, it was a good show. Not like crazy good, but not bad either. You know, just okay. You know, crazy good. Okay. Here's um. Okay. Adobe develops AI-driven approach that could end the age of the green screen in movies and VR. Oh man, yep. something Adobe. Fuck up. <laughs> Researchers at Adobe have collaborated with Beckman Institute of Advanced Science for Advanced Science and Technology to develop a new system based on deep, controversial, uh, oh, con convolutional. Well, that's a fucking weird word. Uh, oh, it's like convolute, convoluted. Yeah, neural networks, uh, which, which can extract foreground content from its background intelligently and accurately. Mm -hmm. And with no need for the blue slash green screen techniques, which had dominated cinema for nearly a century. Uh, the paper Deep Image Matting outlines the process of evaluating the object which needs to be clipped out of its background, which involved the generation of a novel data set containing 49,300 trading images intended to accustom algorithms with the challenges of distinguishing backgrounds and eliminating them. So basically, they get rid of the blue screen and replace it with a uh, software. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, yep. Does anybody else see the irony in the, uh, in the fact that it says advanced technology in the description there? Because there's like nothing Adobe's done in the past 15 years that's fuck up their own product. Benjamin, what's your thoughts? I'm kind of interested to see how it does, like, actually, like, how much processing power and whatnot it's going to take up. I mean, plus, you know, Adobe's yeah. these things that, like, like, like that scale, that, uh, content aware, you know, scaling and all the other stuff that's cool, but then sometimes it kind of messes up. So I'm interested to see how, how it, like, actually works in effect right now. Right. right. I, I know people are, a lot of people, uh, using, like, 3D scanning technology like the connect and stuff we're trying to utilize that because if you can uh get the depth of your image then you could uh mask out like what what's the foreground and background and stuff you know because it's closer to you i think it's cool yeah it's interesting stuff i'm always interested in seeing what they uh can do with this stuff i'm just surprised they haven't like they haven't come up with a way of like you know like you have a stationary background and then you have like the the same background but with the person moving in it i'm i'm surprised they can't develop like a algorithm that like uh knows what pixels are staying still and which pixels aren't and which they should be able to well, I mean, they've done take out they, from it they have filters like that in like you know iChat, you know with the their little green screen thing where it's like take a photo of the static background and you know hmm. so you know it's there it's just it's a matter of how well it's done you know it's like hackers can now use sound waves to take control of your smartphone hmm. this is from the university of michigan though so yeah oh yeah you're on the third one there's an old mantra in the security world that anything can't be hacked and the more complex our devices become, the more methods hackers dream up to break into them. Case in point, a team of researchers can use sound waves to control anything from a smartphone, seriously, to a car, theoretically. The trick boils down to spoofing capacitive 
MEMs, uh, accelerometers, uh, the chips that enable smartphones and Fitbits know when they're in motion, when they're, where they're going, and how quickly. Using a small $5 speaker, researchers at the University of Michigan and the University of South Carolina blasted 20 different accelerometers Excuse me. from five manufacturers with sound waves from malicious music files. The resonant frequencies uh, tricked the sensors in more than half of the accelerometers tested, enabling the researchers to do all sorts of stuff. It's like the opera singer hits the note to break a wine glass. Only in your case, you can spell out words... And send commands to smartphone. Whoops. Kevin Fu, an associate professor of electrical engineering and computer science at Michigan, told the New York Times, you can think of it as a musical virus. Hmm. Oh, like oom-bop. Oom-bop, la-bop, doo-bop. Great. Now, now there's other shit we got to worry about. People are already... Is- I already know people are like, I'm never going to get one of them Google Homes. I'm like, your fucking phone can tell where you're at, guy. <laughs> just as bad, you dumbass. Well, th- this just reminds me of like that thing where they could uh, uh, hear what you're typing just by uh, listening through the microphone or something. Yeah. Remember we did that article a while ago? Zuckerberg has a piece of tape over his microphone and camera so that they can't see what he's doing. They even called everybody those those dumb heifers. He was either. talking about the people that were like, I don't know. What, what's, is, ben, is Ben or Doug there? I'm here. Yep, so am I. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts on the uh, sound hacking here, Doug? I don't care. Gotcha. Bitch, you think of back when like they used to use audio cassettes to load programs. It's like Captain don't Crunch. Figure that this kind of stuff would, you know, appear later, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's a throwback. They're instead of back. instead of Pepsi, it's a fucking hack. Alright. Oh fuck you with your autoplay bullshit. Shut up. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's USA today. Yeah, Facebook founder called uh, trusting users dumb efforts. Yeah, nice. Uber's Kalanick got caught for tricking Apple, risking expulsion from Apple Store, report says. <sighs> Excuse me. I Francisco- thought we didn't tell uh, comment on bullshit on the show. Well, we let you talk all day, Doug. Uh, oh, well. We generally let you put your uh, anime face in the program. San Francisco <laughs> Uber placed the digital wall around Apple's headquarters in an effort to hide the fact it was breaking Apple rules by uh, uh, marking iPhones with persistent digital ID tags that would remain after users had deleted the Uber app and wiped the phone, the New York Times reported Sunday. The actions, first uh, digital uh, fingerprinting users' devices and then geofencing Apple's headquarters to avail the company's actions, earned Uber CEO Travis Kalanick an in-person rebuke from uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook, who threatened to kick Uber out of the powerful uh, Apple App Store. Nice. As for comment, Uber said that it does not track individual users or their location if they have deleted the Uber app. It said that the persistent ID tags have protected it against driver fraud and allowed it to keep <laughs> keep fraudsters from loading the Uber app into a stolen phone, putting in a stolen credit card, taking an expensive ride, and then wiping the phone again and again. Hmm. I, at this point, I don't want anyone to even fucking trust Uber. They're mega shady. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, they're they're doing all this shit, and then they then they we did an article about them where they were like, he was like groping this lady or something. The driver. Yeah. Hmm. 
And what do you got here? The unroll me story? Oh, uh, I, I was replacing that with the other one. I mean, oh, okay. You don't have to do that one. Okay. Would Would you like to see my stories? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hold on, let me close these so I know where I'm at. Okay. This nightmare law could block porn on all connected devices and make you pay to unblock it. Oh. There's a new bill gaining steam with the puritanical uh, state legislators and nanny state Republicans, and it's probably one of the most stupid, misguided attempts to censor the internet in recent memory. In an effort to stop people from watching porn, the bill will cause a regulatory nightmare for tech manufacturers, retailers, websites, consumers, and even state regulators. All this hassle because one guy had a porn addiction and wanted everyone to pay for it. The Human Trafficking and Child Explanation Prevention Act is a draft bill in 13 state legislatures, but has nothing to do with human trafficking or child exploitation. While the bill is slightly different in each state, the model legislation these bills are based on would require all internet-connected devices like computers, smartphones, tablets, and smart TVs to come installed with a filter that would block access to online pornography. You can only remove the filter by going to a retailer and paying a $20 tax, but first you would have to make a written request asking to remove the filter. Then you would have to receive reading material explaining the dangers of pornography and removing the porn filter. Then you would have to confirm and receive the uh, reading material. Oh, confirm that you received the reading material. Then you would pay the $20 to the state, but the retailer may charge additional fees. These fees would add up significantly if a consumer is forced to unlock every device and router in their household. Simple as pie, right? The legislation claims to be a solution to a range of societal ills. On the bill's website, it says the bill would reduce crime by making uh, prostitution hubs, child pornography, revenge pornography, and obscenity, all defined under the existing obscenity code, uh, <coughs> uh, more inconvenient to access. Manufacturers of internet devices would have to be sure their filters do not let any pornographic images in and could be liable if anything gets through. They would also be on the hook if someone used their products to access child pornography or prostitution services. These companies are, are expected to operate re uh, reporting services uh, where uh, consumers could report any vulnera uh, vulnerab uh, vulnerabilities in their filter. Presumably, the cost of operating these services would be passed on to the consumer. So, yeah, this is uh, just horse shit. Um, I'm I'm a grown ass man. If I want to watch porn, fuck you. I'm not paying extra. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there's some violations of speech there. Yeah, I'm a grown ass I man. I mean, in Utah, isn't it, isn't porn illegal? I don't fucking know. I'm just like the only reason they really haven't made a uh, prostitution legal is because they do they still hide behind a human trafficking thing. They're like, oh yeah, it's gonna cause human trafficking. Doug, what's your comment? Doug? Doug? Come on now, we're talking about porn. We're talking about, we're talking about hardcore pornographies here. Come on. Yeah. This is your tax dollars at work. This is what Another, they think. Oh my goodness, be scared moment. That's all this shit is. Uh, Benjamin? I mean, it's it's a question about how you know how far it goes because I'm sure once something like that gets gets passed, it's going to be challenged immediately. So it's just a matter of you know what kind of sent you know president hackers will it. make it so you can just shut it off yourself instantly. I think. So I'm just saying, like whenever I see stuff like this, it's like, yeah, that's that's a wild scare story, but. It's like, I don't know how practical it is about seeing something like that actually get passed, so. Dude, if, when they try to do this, it's just going to be spread around even more than alcohol was back with Prohibition. It, you're going to have people have even crazier porn, probably. Porn? Well, it's like people are already jailbreaking unlocked devices already, so it's like, yeah, 
Good luck with saying, well, you're just going to block your porn now. It's like, really? The internet is for porn. It's it's like uh, that four-year-old virgin where he's like, take back your porn. Okay. The internet is for porn. Anyways, go, let's go on to the next article, if you please, Frank. The Google Assistant SDK will let you run the Assistant on anything. Build your own Google Home out of whatever you want. Today, Google is launching yet another Google Assistant feature. The Google Assistant SDK, uh, this will allow developers to run the Google Assistant on their own hardware prototypes. Wow. The SDK is only launching in developer preview mode today. This is presumably the beginning of a push for third parties to make their own uh, consumer Google Assistant hardware. Google says the SDK will allow any device to provide the full Google Assistant experience. Together with the actions of Google API that launched last year, developers can create their own voice commands and responses that can control the local device. Developers are also sent everything in text form so their software can see what's going on and react to it. To start listening, the SDK uh, supports uh, both the OK Google hot word and a button. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. What's uh, what's Ian cool. think of this as a coder? I think I think Doug's dead. Yeah. Doug. Doug, you killed Doug, guys. Great job. Sweet. Doug. Is Google just like randomly deciding to be like, hey, this person's not gonna work, and then randomly another person's not gonna work then. <laughs> Oh, Doug, you have no opinion? Yeah, he wasn't saying anything, so I should have known there was something wrong. No? Nothing? Okay. Money yep. maker on the toilet is way, 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 money maker bullshit. There you go. Okay. Here's, <laughs> here's one that's in line with your interest, uh, Ian. MIT's giant mobile 3D printer could build a building in 14 hours, and someday it may be headed to Mars. At first first glance, the digital construction platform looks as awkward as its name. A nozzle is attached to the end of a pair of robotic arms atop a rover-like vehicle outfitted with tank treads. Then there's a flatbed trailer attached to the back with two big metal tanks strapped to its top. The system is actually a giant mobile 3D printer, and the MIT team uh, behind it believes it could help revolutionize home construction both here on Earth and other planets in the distant future. The notion of 3D printing a house isn't a new one, of course. It's been tried before with varying degrees of success. Uh, but since this project, apart from much of its com- competition, however, is a move away from modularity toward a uh, system capable of printing a structure in one single go. The system is freed of the special constraints of a more traditional 3D printer by the long industrial robotic arm out front. Another more precise arm <coughs> is attached to the end of uh, that one, allowing it to be controlled with much more precision. This gives the system uh, much a larger build space than a traditional 3D printer, which is constrained by the limited volume of its print bed. Is, is Doug dead? No. Oh. Huh. He's just behaving. Here. There's a video of it building a building. Oh, that's it. You see that? See that? Yet? Yeah. Um, now that's that's pretty cool because that's I I saw like a while ago they did have like a 3D printer but it was like on uh like giant like I beam rails and stuff that was like uh squeezing out like a uh, cement like toothpaste and it was building like small houses and stuff. Benjamin, um, could be going to Mars. Well, cool. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, are they still, they're still trying to send those people on a one-way trip to Mars. Like, they could use all the good technology they can get before they go. I guess. Yeah. So. I'm still waiting for, I thought they were going to do, like, a show where they were going to, like, choose, like, the best guy to go to Mars or whatever. Who fucking knows? I'm actually uh, going to go and dip out, guys. I'm starting to get really tired of the long day. <laughs> all right, Okay, man. man. Uh, one, Thanks for coming. Right, Peace.
Yeah. Sweet dreams, Sweet dreams about opening your gym there. A lot of hard work. Long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. But i wait. That's true. Okay. Night, Doug. Yeah. Later. There he goes. Okay. Well, here's another 3D printer story. The 3D printer that could finally change manufacturing. Desktop Metal thinks its machines will give designers and manufacturers a practical and affordable way to print metal parts. Metal, you say? Mm hmm. It's less than two months before his company's initial product launch, and CEO uh, Rick Fulop, uh is excited showing off rows of stripped down 3D printers, several bulky microwave furnaces, and assorted small metal objects on a table for display. Behind a closed door, a team of industrial designers sit around a, a shared work desk, each facing a large screen. The wall behind them is papered with various possible looks for the startup's ambitious products. 3D printers that can fabricate metal parts cheaply and quickly enough to make the technology practical for widespread use in product design and manufacturing. The company, Desktop Metal, has raised nearly $100 million from leading venture capital firms and the venture units of such companies as General Electric, BMW, and Alphabet. The founders include four prominent MIT professors, including the head of the school's Department of Materials Science and Emmanuel Sachs, who uh, filed one of the original patents on 3D printing in 1989. Still, despite all the money and uh, expertise, there's no guarantee the company will succeed in its goal of reinventing how we make metal parts and thus transforming much of manufacturing. Huh. Oh, yeah. Here's, I guess, a hydraulic manifold is processed inside a microwave furnace, which uses temperatures of up to uh, 1,400 degrees Celsius to uh, uh, center uh, the steel part. Such a part is too complex to make with conventional methods. Wow. wow. That's pretty cool. pretty cool. So here's a uh, steel propeller that just been printed. Between yep. the propeller's blades are, and the metal support is a thin line of ceramic, which will turn to sand during the sintering process, allowing the finished part to easily uh, separate from the support. See? So they printed out that wing nut or whatever? They, they it's, it's a propeller, and then in between they put uh, ceramic that'll turn into sand. Huh. See? Then it falls away to like that, see? Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's something different. See, yeah, there's that, like you said, that wing nut. Yeah. yeah. Designing, I remember it, when, I, I was, when I was taking mechanical engineering, the uh, actual, to draw a actual, like a screw was technically almost impossible using CAD at the time. Really? Right. Right. Yeah. You can make mm. it look like it with a 2D print, but as soon as you go to 3D, it will lose it all. So... Yeah. yeah, but uh, let, let me let me ask you, Frank. Now, now that you're uh, pimping out your man cave and shit, uh, would you ever see yourself getting a 3D printer? Uh, no. No, I, I have no practical use for it. It would sit and collect dust next to my regular printers, and I said printers. I would I use them <laughs> until until the ink ran out, and then buying the cartridge cost more than buying the fucking printer. Yeah. So no, I. I don't have an Etsy store. That's really all you could do with it. You could open an Etsy store and sell little knickknacks and trinkets. And I, have, I mean, I wouldn't have any interest. I mean, I would 3D print little shit to hang up and little chotskis, but that I would never be able to mass produce anything, no. Well, I guess it's different with me because since I can actually design the stuff pretty good on my computer, then I could design functional things for, like, my computer and other shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have experience with uh, AutoCAD, but that was years ago, and, you know, I don't know. I just what about you? No... Oh, go ahead. I just I said I have no no use for it in my everyday life. Benjamin? What about Ben? Yeah. yeah. Uh, would I ever get a 3D printer? Probably not. It's the kind of it... technology that I think it's cool that it's out there. But realistically, I'd expect that some sometime soon you're going to have, like, 
3D printer Kinko's pop up where people have, you know, you pay for time to get something printed just like you do at a regular print shop. So I figure, you know, it's going to be more affordable that way because it's still I'm waiting like you, until get, you, you pay to print it in like one, one material or one color and it costs thousands of dollars. It's like, I'd rather go to a shop and have them pay for the, the overhead and I just pay for whatever it is I'm getting. Yeah, no, I would... If they if it came down to where it was like a hundred bucks and you can buy the you know the actual uh, was it plastic for you know pennies then it it'd be, it'd be a worth worthwhile investment but that, but, but I, I don't I see it going, going going down that much uh, more than like a regular two D printer because those have already gotten as cheap as they can and they've had years and years to get really cheap you know well I mean you know I mean. It, if someone figures out a way, man, there. I mean, think about it. They make VR glasses out of fucking cardboard. Someone had to think it up. Uh, so all all they gotta do is go. I mean, yeah, it's totally. You know, it, it's dangerous. You gotta know what the fuck you're doing. But it's three dollars. You know. Yeah. And speaking of that, do you have any opinions, Ben, on the specific article? Like, would you mind having a, a, a something that gets to a couple thousand degrees to melt the stuff down like having that right next to you on your desk <laughs> well i mean that kind of stuff is for makers that have a dedicated shop it's like i don't think i'd have that on top of this thing you that know, guy I'm who just... was 3d printing guns probably yeah yeah i mean pe people that are making you know hardware and you know people that have a machine shop already and use it to fabricate stuff then you, you know that's for them <laughs> so right right all right. Okay. <clears throat> Check this out. This story I got because I thought it was funny. The U.S. Senate staff ID cards have photo of smart chip, but no actual chip. Senate employees uh, just use passwords, and their badges sport a picture of an alternative. When Congress held hearings following the breach of the systems of the Office of Personnel Management in 2015, one of the issues that caused great... Uh, consternation among lawmakers was that the OPM had failed to implement two-factor authentication for employees, particularly when using uh, virtual private networks. Federal information security standards in place at the time call for strong user authentication for any uh, federal information system, but the OPM <laughs> hadn't figured out how to implement two-factor authentication principles. Something uh, users no password plus something they have which in government is typically a smart card id with digital authentication keys programmed onto a chip the opm was alone while the department of defense began issuing command access cards in 2008 to be used for two-factor authentication on systems and to control physical access to dot facilities most of the civilian agencies the u.s federal government still hadn't implemented their own smart card systems at the time of the OPM breach. So, yeah. Uh, mm. You would you have a card and a fucking little chip, like, that look... It's not a chip, it's the fucking picture of a chip. So, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was funny. <laughs> ben, you... Think that's... you... I mean, oh, big surprise that, you know... The Senate, the people that want to do all kinds of stuff, and like it's a series of tubes. It's not a series of tubes. It's like a big truck. It's a toilet. <laughs> Ian, what's your thoughts? I was gonna ask, do you do you have one of those cars now that has those stupid chips in them? My credit cards, yes. Yeah, because I I haven't had to switch mine yet because mine, uh, I I could still have it doesn't expire for few months still so i'm trying to like hold on to it as long as i can no, without needing expired. a chip they sent us new cards and said you have to use these whether yours are expired or not uh we didn't want we didn't want to because a lot of places uh their shit wasn't ready even though it was there and it had the little sign say insert they go yeah it doesn't fucking work yet don't waste your time or that half the time you slide it and they go oh no you got to use the chip now and i'm like but you told me last time to fucking slide it Arr! so yeah, I, I, I heard it's, yeah, it's like a total pain in the ass, First man. First world yeah. problem. Yeah. You know, we have water and toilets and stuff. Okay. The FCC thinks throttling doesn't hurt consumers. 
Good old okay, pie. The FCC today re re released the draft of its notice to proposed rulemaking, which would alter e existing new or net neutrality rules. In it, the FCC outlines what it feels needs to be addressed in the reform of its rules. If you think our emphasis on the potential end game, where everyone has to pay extra based on site specific throttling, is hyperbolic, you might be interested in the section titled. Need for the no-throttling rule. In it, the SEC asks the no-throttling rule mirrors the no-blocking rule and bans the impairment of degradation of lawful internet traffic or use of a non-harmful device subject to reasonable network management practices. We seek comment on whether this rule is still necessary, particularly for smaller providers. How does the rule benefit consumers and what are its costs? When is throttling harmful to consumers? Even if this question isn't facetious and the quotes make me think it's possible, I think it's probably the wrong one. The question is should uh, the question it should be asking is why would small internet providers need to throttle lawful internet traffic? Yeah. So uh yeah. Yeah. What's your... they, what's your These are the guys making the rules and they don't understand. Well, it's uh, it's that one guy who's now in charge who wants to dial back the whole net neutrality thing and all these other stuff. And it's like last time I read an interview about you know talk about what he was proposing, the people in the article were like, uh, he he just said something that contradicts itself. We don't. Uh, no, it was he... nice having the internet while it lasted. Yeah, yeah what's he... what's that guy's name? Ajit Pie. Ajit Pie or something like that. More like agitate. No, they they basically every, they want to roll back neutrality and they want to roll back regulations because they feel that if they cave in a little bit more to the companies, then the they'll somehow loosen up and be nicer to their customers. It's all deregulation shit. movement, Frank. It's they're just helping the yeah. businesses rather than the actual consumers. Because how does deregulating and making it easier for the companies to screw over users? How does that actually help the users any? It does. Does it? All right. So. Let's. It's like Doug was saying last week. He actually had a uh, an intelligent thought. It's like you know, it's like I want money. I want money. I want your money. I want your money. Yep. I want money. So yeah. Want more money. That's right. That's how they do it. Well, that's all I got. So, uh, so you, you got talk about unroll me, uh, get users info. That was that was a, a message that uh, Ian had. In the, we're not talking. Well, about I was gonna do that one too, but like I thought it wouldn't be too long. I mean, you could talk about it if you want, but no, no. I just thought you'd have some nah. opinions, Ian. Nah. Ian so you're the nah. the user oh, info, you know, did, protected, did, did, you know, privacy guy. I, I don't know. I forgot to tell yeah. you. I sent Ben a message. I didn't know if I sent it to, sent it to you about uh, Windows says not to uh, Microsoft says, warns users not to install its latest Windows update. Really? Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me click this article. And let me go. Let me go. Open it up in my browser. Here. I have it right. And I'll throw it in, in the chat here. Microsoft warns users not to install its latest Windows update for now. With its creator's update for Windows 10, Microsoft promised that users would have the option to postpone future updates for a limited period of time, and many rejoiced. But now that the update has started rolling out, it's become apparent that there are still some stability issues and performing a manual installation isn't recommended right now. In a blog post, Microsoft's director of programming management explained that the latest update has been rolling out slowly because there are known issues that could be a problem for anyone who is an advanced user. The post doesn't go into depth on what those issues are, but it appears that all the bugs haven't been ironed out for certain devices. For instance, PCs that use a certain type of Broadcom radio were having connectivity problems with Bluetooth devices. If you aren't the type to manually install updates, this probably isn't your problem. Windows 10 has automatically pushed updates to users since the debut. The yeah. creator's update has a lot of cool little features, but the most useful one is that it offers a simple way to pause installing updates for for up to seven days. 
Updates are good for security, but Windows has had an insidious way of suddenly deciding it's time to install that latest patch and restart right when you're in the middle of something important. Microsoft is still automatically updating users this time around, and if you encounter problems, you can find instructions for rolling back the update here. If uh, you're the Cavalier type who doesn't care about warnings and just wants to start making 3D dogs in MS Paint, you can manually download the update here. Hmm. So, yeah. What was the update again? <laughs> was, was it the creator update? I don't know. No, not like, I mean, like, why were they saying it was bad, though? <clears throat> well, like, it might cause problems with certain uh, computers, like the one guy said their Broadcom uh, meant they, um, uh, what the hell was it? Uh, they wouldn't have Wi Fi or, or Bluetooth, they wouldn't have Bluetooth uh, connectivity for some reason. Mm. Bunch mm. of shit. Uh, That's all I got there. I don't really know what to say about that, but I was going to say Ben was asking me. I looked at it really quick, and all I could say about that article is, yeah, pretty much anymore these days is, yeah, you're the you're the product anymore. Your user data. That's that's what uh, that's the product. <laughs> I want money. That's why they gave Windows to you for free. Windows 10 for to you for free is because there's all that spyware shit in there, so they I want, uh, I want they can target all that stuff to you. Then I want your money. Yeah, I like money. <laughs> I want your money. Well, that's all I got. Anybody else got anything for the show this week? Because I'm all out of news articles. No, I don't. I don't think Ben had anything. Did, did nope. you, Ben? Nope. nope. Okay, that's family. cool. Wait, all on, on behalf of uh, Ben and Ian and Doug, who's Doug. sleeping, we'd like yeah. to thank y'all for tuning in. And uh, we'll see on behalf of all of us from the Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Peace out. Peace out. Boobs. 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 Uh, this is we're live. Boobs. <laughs>